Okay, <clears throat> when, when we get a little news come out, and there's already been a directional move, probably the assumption is somebody knew something. And that's one of the reasons we're also looking at uh, these charts as well as our moving average charts to see the levels step by step. So, so this move has been a contra. And I said at some point we need to retest that 17 and a half breakout. And that would be a test before we even think about the gap down here at uh, 15, 14, 75. So in a, in a trade like this, you, you're very suspect if you jump in late. Okay, we're going this way because we have to do our measure from the top as well, not just from the intraday range. And we had said that this would become a logical target before we're done, whether today or the next day, to come back and do this retest. And this was the overshoot up here. Here was the arch we talked about. This is a very normal formation that you will see several humps. We've got that in our criminal handbook. If you go into our, you know, member area, we even have a picture of this type of a diagram, double humps. And, and this is obviously um, more bearish when we have this shorter hump over here and it comes down. So 31 still our aggressive resistance had a great trade to test 17 and a half prior high, 18 area. And we said today, if we got to 22s, make sure paid, and then we would be looking at the 17s to 18s as our next support target. And, and that's played out. And we still have some stolen range, but this trade has played out. And don't forget, this, this was that fast move up, remember? This was that fast move, and, and, and now all of those traders underwater. We broke, remember we said 35, 35 breaks, and it'll open the door south side. 35 broke, right? Late day on Friday. So that's why we were looking for the short side to sell, sell any bounces today. Because these traders up here were trapped, and because 35 had become resistance an aggressive resistance in that 31, 32 area. So that's the best I can do to diagram this recent move of the last few days. And again, a reminder, this is a lot of this is related to options, killing the puts and then come back in, you know, a regression type trade. And the five minute variety, green line pushing, traders underwater. And here's our 30 minute chart. Same idea, the retest and our resistance. So when this happens, then one of the things I want to do is either jump to a little bit deeper chart like a 60 or go to a five or a 15 and see the faster swings because we already know this has helped us to, to determine the resistance area. And this chart was helpful to see <clears throat> multiple gaps and to see the idea of the two-day range. The two-day trend was coming down against the five-day range and forever range going up. So 30 points off of that high. That's, that's, a, that's a better proportion. So thrust was up, and then this has been the contra, and it started very innocent looking um, on Friday, and then the late day sell, which obviously somebody knew something. And then the gap down, and then here we are. So these traders trapped. And this offers much better balance in the market. So now <clears throat> all we have to worry about is those gaps back in the 900 area, right? Seek. <laughs> oh, Lordy. 
Panama Canal trade. Float it up. <clears throat> sell it to Charlie. Float it up. Sell it to Charlie. Yeah, got to buy. Got to buy. We said one day the stop clock traders will be right about a big downside move, but not yet. We've said all along. Think about buying support as long as it keeps working. And then we'd said on Friday, eh, you know, we've always said that, but maybe it's time to turn our mind around since we've hit that big target at, at 29.30. So we're still going to keep an eye on that as a, an important idea. It does mean we have to stop exactly at it, but we want to monitor that over time to see are we migrating backwards because this was a very big target. And, and usually I think of this as a loading zone where traders who are smart understand this is where you're taking profits and perhaps creating a push in the other direction and they're loading up the bus to come the other way. It's just like running overrunning first base, you know, the base is 2930, but you overrun it uh, down the line because your speed is so fast trying to beat the beat the throw. And because of the narrow overnight range um, that was printed, <clears throat> we've got to think stolen range because the true range, really, we've got to think about from back here. So I say anybody that's been fortunate enough to get <clears throat> below 22s and into the 18 zone, make sure you're paid. And below this is good fortune. May take some time, if at all today. But the pressure has been down and probably will remain down, but uh, I'm not overly bearish. I said, don't be overly bearish. I, I figured if we got to 18s today, we've done well. So I already think that anything below 18 is good fortune. J just a gut level feel. And I'm not always right. A lot of times I'm nowhere close to being right. So all I can say is <clears throat> two-day range right now. We've got a, got a nice thrust south, south side. We've got the uh, rest of the day. We've got some time. I, I think we're going to still get some backing and filling in both directions. So 31, 32 area is still our resistance. Anybody that has got to our support zone at 18, paid for sure. And then we've obviously got to look to areas like the gap below us as important ideas. And the goal is take something out of the day. It's not to guess every little wiggle correctly. So if you've had a good run here this morning, make sure you lock something already. <clears throat> 